Harold the Hedgehog by Stuart Owen This is Harold. Harold is a hedgehog. Harold the Hedgehog likes to stay at home and tend to his garden, especially on Saturdays. The wood where Harold lives has always been lovely and quiet. Recently, though, things were getting loud and noisy. The beavers would start their construction work very early in the morning. Little birds with very loud voices would twitter their gossip all day long. The foxes had taken to throwing parties in the cemetery of all places. The wolves would run up and down the street howling all the night. And strangest of all, eagles had started flying in circles high across the sky. It was all too much for Harold. His quill stood on end. He felt himself curl up tight, shutting out the world. Nothing could bother him when he was like this. He was safe. As Harold sat there, looking more like a sea urchin than a hedgehog, he began to lose his happiness. Oh no, said Harold, coming out of his prickly covering. With all this madness going on, I shall have to find a way to keep my happiness. And so he set off to speak with his good friend, Bradley the Badger. Bradley knew everything there was to know about living in the woods. Bradley would know what to do. As Harold scurried across the forest floor, he came across a stream where he met a small fish called Fleur. Excuse me, said Harold. I seem to be losing my happiness. Could you tell me how you manage to keep yours? Of course, Fleur replied. I keep my happiness by swimming every day. Why don't you give it a try? Oh no, thought Harold. He had been in water before and he avoided it at all costs. Thank you anyhow, he said and carried along his way. On the path, Harold saw his friend Greta the goat. How do you keep your happiness, Greta? he asked. She looked thoughtful for a moment, and then with a bright smile, she said, I just ignore anything that doesn't make me happy. Have you tried that? No, I haven't, said Harold. And as he walked along the road, he tried his best to ignore all the noise and bring back even just a bit of his happiness but it was no use. When he passed the dam, he asked Ben the beaver how he keeps his happiness. Just keep your hands busy, he said. You can't be unhappy when your hands are busy. Harold had busied himself before, and he knew he could live without that added stress. Thank you anyhow, he said, and snuffled on down the road his happiness still slowly slipping away. He came across Linda the lynx, sitting as always on her purple pillow with golden tassels. So, you seek to keep your happiness, she said mysteriously. Yes, said Harold. How did you know? Come, sit and concentrate on your happiness said Linda, gesturing to a little corner of her pillow. Harold sat and tried to focus on what little happiness he had left, but he found it impossible to keep all the noises out. Harold couldn't decide if Linda's method for keeping happiness was too much effort or not enough, but he did decide that it was definitely not for him. After half an hour of sitting in silence, he excused himself very politely. Linda didn't seem to notice. He stopped in at Vincent the Vole's house, who told him, The best way to keep your happiness is to go running every morning and every night. Harold was many things, but he was not a runner. Thank you anyhow, he said, and started back along the path. He began to get desperate for answers. He asked Boris the Boar, who suggested he start a family and eat five truffles a day. Harold liked living alone and couldn't stand the smell of truffles. Lick your ears and chew your paws, said Wendy the wolf. 
Harold decided he would not be doing that thank you very much. When he asked Finley the fox, he suggested Harold dance in the graveyard, and Tim the tit was so unhelpful, Harold almost lost his happiness entirely. He was almost at Bradley's house. Bradley would know what to do. Just as Harold was arriving, Ormond the owl flapped down with his powerful wings and rested on a branch above Harold. How are you, little hedgehog? asked Ormond. I'm losing my happiness, said Harold defeatedly, and I don't know how to get it back. I've asked everyone and nothing seems to work for me. Ormond considered Harold the hedgehog with his ancient eyes. If keeping your happiness is worrying you, then perhaps you should give it away. And in the silence, Ormond the owl flew off. What utter nonsense, said Harold to no one in particular. That was the worst advice of all, he thought. When Harold opened Bradley's door, he was shocked. Everything was everywhere. Socks on the bench, dishes piled in the sink, the couch pillows were anywhere but on the couch. Bradley the Badger, always so neat and tidy, had let his house fall apart. The worst sight of all was Bradley himself. His hair matted, still in his unwashed pyjamas, curled up in a ball on the couch. It's all too noisy, said Bradley. The wolves are howling, the beavers are drilling, the foxes are making a ruckus and the birds won't stop twittering. What do I do, Harold? What do I do? Harold looked at his friend Bradley and with his last ounce of happiness, he smiled. Let's clean up the house for a start, he said. And he helped Bradley up off the couch and together they tidied up the room. Later that night, Harold went home and Bradley went to bed in his freshly washed pyjamas. And though the wolves were still howling and the foxes were still dancing and the birds were still chattering and the beavers would soon be drilling again, Harold and Bradley went to sleep and they were both a little happier.